Hello everyone, this is Byron King with Investor Intel coming to you from Toronto, Ontario and PDAC, the uh, uh, Prospectors and Developers Association of Canada, the big mining conference. I'm with Pat Ryan of Ucor. Uh, Ucor is in the rare earth business and not just in the rare earth business, they are moving towards the ability to produce at commercial and industrial scale uh, rare earth elements and not some melange or not some goop that has to go to China. I'm talking producing elements in the United States. Pat, thank you for being here. It's great to, great to speak with you. Yeah, Byron, pleasure to be here. Thank you very much. Okay, well, uh, we're, we've, in another interview, we have talked about UCOR itself, and you've done a lot with UCOR, but you are at the point now, UCOR, you and your team, your team, which is fabulous, who I've met, uh, is at the point where you are ramping up on a, about a year, about a 21-month schedule by the end of 2024 to be actually producing rare earth elements, and specifically the heavies, the magnet metals, here in the United States, or well, we're in Canada, but in North America, let's say. Yes, yeah, that's correct. Yeah, we're, uh, we're working with our engineering groups right now. We uh, built a commercial demo plant, which we talked about, and uh, that commercial demo plant, the metrics and running thousands of hours from that particular plant are gathered up now to plug into the engineering plans on a go forward to have construction completed by the end of 24 and producing with US friendly concentrates from around the world that are ex-China, processing with a technology that's uh, quite superior as far as we have uh, uh, measured and uh, had independently evaluated by experts in the field and automotive companies who have looked at the tech and said, wow, this is ready for commercial, let's do it. There are a lot of misconceptions out there in viewer land and certainly in the general public about these rare earth things, that it's somehow or another there's some magical mining solution to it, or we're going to mine them here in America. Is, is it fair to say that there are about zero rare earth metals, heavy rare earth metals, produced outside of China these days? Uh, you know, that, that's correct. There are zero produced outside of China. And, and the thing about mining, Byron, uh, the only solution right now uh, for, the, for the most part, anyone that mines a concentrate, they get to send it back to China and have it separated and it never leaves China. And, and sending your concentrate back to China for separation is not independence. It's not an ex-China supply chain and it won't get done what needs to get done. So in the sense that if somebody needs magnetic materials for electric traction motors in an EV or in a windmill or they need some other uh, exotic element in a solar panel or anything, whether it's you know, in your iPhone, whatever, uh, they are buying that product from a Chinese supplier ultimately. Is that, is that the way it is? Ultimately, there are, there are magnet ma manufacturers that exist in Japan, but the vulnerability is that 90% of the separation to get the oxide which goes into the metal, which makes the magnet, that is controlled by China. And so it's a very, uh, a very uh, well, security risk situation. And, and you, you've got to get around that. You've got to break that or you will not uh, do what needs to be done for independence here in North America. Well, now you have a commercial scale project in Kingston, Ontario, which is about a two and a half, three hour drive uh, east of Toronto along Northern Lake Ontario there. Uh, I visited it just the other day. I've met it, I, your team. What, what have you done there? What are you doing in that commercial scale project? So on the commercial scale project, we've taken the, uh, the principle of rapid SX, our technology, which is based on the same chemistry as solvent extraction. And we first started with a research apparatus a couple of years ago, taking all the data that had been collected and, and gathered from the, the uh, company we acquired the tech from. And on a research apparatus, we started to test everything. We started to test time to equilibrium. We started to test the uh, uh, pumps and valves. And, and you know, in a, a solvent extraction plant, you have something known as a mixer settler. And we've replaced that with a column-based tech. And the column-based tech has a contactor, uh, which is proprietary. And that contactor allows for mixing of, of organic and aqueous so much more efficiently. And then it goes into a phase separator. And between the contactor and phase separator, in a vertical footprint, you're replacing uh, football fields of solvent extraction mixer settler tanks. And so we have built a plant in Kingston, uh, 52 stages. You saw it, 52 stages that run through the um, uh, you know, extract and the scrub and the, uh, every phase you can run through. And we can run light rare earth through and do the SX1, 2, and 3. And we've run heavy rare earth through and go all the way up to SX6 and produce heavy rare earths in North America in, in the tens of tons, in the tens of tons. So we can then take that metric and plug it into the bigger commercial plant down the road. Now, one of the things that is frustrating to somebody like me, who I follow this a lot, 
and, and there is just such a disconnect between the grand strategy of the politicians of we're going to electrify the world by 2030 or 35 or 50 or whatever, and then the whole industrial policy that has to come out of that in terms of, you know, we, we, we have to build factories, we have to have mines, we have to turn the mines into something that will connect with the factories at the end. I mean, uh, you've got people who are not married up with, with the permitting side, the EPA side, the Corps of Engineers side. What, are, you seem to be a bridge that's, that's cutting through all of this red tape uh, between a user, like an, automoto, an automobile company, for example, and the miner who is producing a mineral sand or a hard rock out of a, out of a mine, in the, mine in the hillside somewhere. Yeah, you know, I think the, uh, the government's playing an important role because it's, it's a new market and therefore they can at least level the playing field a little bit. And things like the Inflation Reduction Act in the U.S., they give the uh, consumer an opportunity to have a discounted rate on an electric vehicle when they buy it. But the real issue is that the companies, real companies that are building with their plans and investing billions of dollars like, like Ford Motor Company and GE Renewable and whatnot, they're out here, but the critical metals industry that has to supply them are behind and there's no alignment. They're not aligned with where they need to be. And so there needs to be a real push to get the actual job done. For us, we looked at many opportunities. We can take our tech, anything used with solvent extraction can be used, uh, rapid SX can be used with it. We, we looked at the battery metals, we looked at nickel and cobalt, and we looked at um, uh, the potentials to, uh, you know, for lithium and whatnot. But we said, you know what, rare earth, and the focus on rare earth mid-market separation is an absolute need. And as much as we hear about batteries that are going up, uh, you know, costing $10,000 per EV, that, that $400 value of rare earth oxide that goes into an electric motor, the magnets that make that motor work, and the battery allowing it to go as far as it can possibly go, if you don't have that $400 of rare earth oxide, you don't have a vehicle that's gonna work. And in the conversations we've had with automotive companies and other um, um, wind energy manufacturers and whatnot, they've indicated that one of their biggest constraints right now is that particular rare earth side. They, they don't know where they're going to get it, the separated oxide to build it out. So governments, to your point, um, you know, they're there, they can level the playing field. We're not making our decisions based on uh, political landscape. We're making our decisions based on sound, robust economics and, and business. Let's get the job done for real customers. And that is a point that you've made before, and it's a brilliant point that you don't sell things to markets, you sell them to customers. Uh, Pat, you have a background in the automobile industry as a tier one supplier to, you know, household name automobile companies, and so, so you, you, know, you know what they're looking for, I take it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, you know, at the end of the day, they, they want to make sure they have a continuous supply of product. They want to make sure that the price doesn't fluctuate all over the price through the life of a vehicle. And when a vehicle comes out, there's typically a five-year window on a platform. They don't want a fluctuation of price all over the place. And they want to have quality and spec on, you know, where it needs to be all the way through. So deliver it on time, get the spec right, don't fluctuate with your price all over the place. Be a good tier one supplier, and, and that's, what, that's what the customer wants at the end of the day. So go find the customers, build your plant to feed the customers, build your plant number one, and then look to plant number two. But that's exactly what we're doing. And that's where you are right now, is you're focused on taking the commercial uh, site in Kingston and, and upscaling it to, the, to whatever is going to be in Louisiana, uh, a, you know, a larger facility, wherever it's going to be, we don't know that yet, and, uh, and, and take it from there. Yeah, I think you know it, it's fair to say too that uh, we have identified a building. Okay. We started with uh, 20 buildings in Louisiana, and the team went out and they narrowed it down to 10, and then they narrowed it to three, and now they've narrowed it to one. And so negotiations are ongoing with one particular building in Louisiana, uh, and that will be the home, and that will be the home to take it up to a 5,000 ton rare earth oxide that the market needs and customers need. Well, we could talk all day, but you know we're limited by our time. But thank you so much for speaking with with myself and speaking with the uh, audience out there. Uh, it's UCOR uh, people, take a look. Uh, they, are the, they are the leader right now. They are on the pathway to producing uh, rare earth metals for the automotive industry, among others. Uh, thank you for watching. Thank you, Pat. Thank you, Byron.